Michelle McManus is probably the nicest people you'll ever meet. I met her at a corporate event and she was sound. Is that right? What were you doing at the event? Were you the microphone stand? Hello and welcome to the Glasgow Dad podcast. Coming up in the show. She was like battered in the press because of her looks. <laughs> You've got that to come, son. <laughs> See, John Smeaton, yeah. when that happened, the attack, he was on a cigarette break. He was off duty. I they probably never even attacked him. He probably went out and got a light after burning guy. <laughs> So see the dog that played Greyfriars, Bobby? So he made loads of money during the 70s going to like charity events and visiting hospitals. And so he visited hospitals as one of a charity in the 70s? He patients in hospitals, I guess. Right, I wonder if he ever ran into Jimmy Savile. <laughs> but first, we're talking about the top five of Scotland's unsung heroes. Heroes? I prefer Quality Street. <laughs> well, maybe we could do Scotland's top five unsung celebrations I still prefer Quality Street <laughs> do you know who any of them will be then the top five unsung heroes I can't even say that what do you mean unsung heroes are they are they heroes or are they ball bags I mean <laughs> what, are we, what are we talking about can... are these are these people who have advanced the cause of Scottishness are set it back thousands of years who are we talking about the fault that have come out of nowhere Folk that have come out of nowhere. Aye. Know that that T-junction the what, other day. People have crawled out of a sewer <laughs> from under a rock. And then been heroes. Heroes. Basically folk in Scotland that came for nothing. A bit like yourself. Somebody that came for nothing and knew as a Scottish hero. Yeah, nothing spawned, nothing. <laughs> well, we have a lesson to see if we well, can try I, and work I, it. Clearly you've got something for me. I've got something, uh, something I made earlier. Right. So let's go for the first person. You come to Glasgow. Glasgow doesn't accept us, do you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll set about you. Glasgow doesn't accept us? <laughs> Is no. that what he said? No, Glasgow doesn't accept this. We'll set about you. Yeah. Smito. Smito. Whatever happened to him? He lives in America now, apparently. Does he? He's done well for himself. <laughs> and that's what people do. I mean, people do well and then they bolt, don't they? They go somewhere better. They leave the country. And what does that say about us? We're still here, man. Well, we, who knows? We might uh, get ourselves involved in putting somebody in the balls and make famous. No, hardly. Hardly. <laughs> they're, they're, they're likely to boot you in the boys back. <laughs> See, John Smeaton, yeah. when that happened, the attack, he was on a cigarette break. He was off duty. I, they probably never even attacked him. He probably went out and got a light after burning guy. I, I wouldn't be chasing a terrorist. I'd be away. I'm scared of fireworks. I'd be running away for a sprinkler, man. Well, the idea of terrorists bombing Glasgow Airport, to me, is bizarre. I mean, what economic damage are they going to do? Well, I suppose either uh, stop people picking up, so that's eight pound a time. <laughs> but, I mean, what economic damage are they going to do? <laughs> Where do you fly to for Glasgow? Luton? <laughs> Belfast? Is that what you're thinking? That the only reason we've not had another terrorist attack in Glasgow is because they introduced the drop-off charge? I mean, strategic international targets. The World Trade Center, I can see the point of that. The American Embassy, and then Glasgow Airport. What sort of damage was done? Oh, I 40 quid a duty-free. Right? I mean, <laughs> why did they... Target Glasgow Airport. Maybe they thought we would all still be fully booze, so when they hit us, we'd go up. I mean, it happened in summer. So was it, did it happen during the fair? It happened during the Glasgow fair, didn't it? I think it did, aye. Because Gordon Brown hadn't been in office very, off, very long. That was his first major speech he had to do. Cause, like, Tony Blair's was Diana dying, and then his was somebody trying to blow up Glasgow <laughs> Airport. That's the thing about planting a bomb in Glasgow. You go like that, what happened? A bomb in half in Glasgow, whereabouts? I don't know, it was somewhere around here. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a ready a dump. But, <laughs> oh, Smito. So, what was he, a baggage handler? A baggage handler. Aye. Right. I wish you'd, I, I don't, I mean, I don't think baggage handlers are that quick to put your cases on the carousel, but any terrorist attack, they're right there. But if it's the steps for the plane, you're waiting about two days. No, I don't know. That, that's an old trope, isn't it? I mean, have you ever been waited long or lost a bag? What have you done? There was one time I waited longer in my bag than the flight took for Gatwick. Why was that? Well, because... Did were... they get lost or something? No, I think there was... A... No, how they go and strike there and again. So they can only do one... They can only kick one bag at a time. Have you ever lost a bag? I mean, that's annoying, man. 
But the best bit is when you're first bag. Have you ever been first bag? <laughs> no. I've been first bag twice. See when you're standing there waiting and the baggage carousel's coming round and you go like that, I wonder how long I'll have to wait and you see your bag. <laughs> you see your bag come and you go, I'm first bag. <laughs> it's happened to me twice. I mean, that's that's just awesome. And what do you do? Do you like go mental and go yes and scream in folks' faces? No, but people are going... Ah, fuck he's got his bag and they're all still there waiting and it's I think it's that thing where I don't know you're, you're kind of unsure that your bag's even going to turn up mm. and there's people steal bags you know that don't you people go on trains for instance without a bag and what they do is they, they look about and they see a bag up in the luggage rack and then as they're coming off the train they'll just nick the bag you don't know what's in the bag. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be just a fucking bag of washing you've stole. Mm. Right? And then you you take it back to your crack den if you're a baggage thief. And you go, oh, look what I've got. And you open it up and you go, oh, fuck's sake. A load of shitey clays and a box of cream crackers or something. There's nothing <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> like that show where you'd buy a garage and then they'd open the door and you'd see what was in it. What's that called? <laughs> Storage Wars. Storage That's Wars. That's right. Aye. People open a garage and you go, do you want to buy everything in here? And the guy will auction it off. Aye, well, <laughs> that's not the same thing. Well, it is the same thing and it's not the same thing because you're not stealing it. You're just making an <laughs> offer for it. But I remember I was watching Storage Wars and there was two black bags <laughs> in, in the, the locker. And the, they're all standing outside and the guy auctions it off. There's just two black bags. They don't know what's in <laughs> the two black bags. But it go like that, you know, ten pound, twenty pound, and then we every the guy pay for it. And he opened the two black bags and it was just rags. <laughs> wow. I mean you see garbage bags. Aye. That's what you say. It says when you see garbage bags, there's a good chance it's not some drug dealer's money. Mm. It's in this and it's it's just two bags of garbage. They should do that way at Glasgow Airport for any lost luggage. You go in and there's a bag and you bid in it and then you open it. That would be good. Well, there must be. There must there, be. There must be baggage that never gets reclaimed. Must be. I mean, wait, there must be. Wait, I wonder where it goes. Imagine there was like Glasgow Dad's case. You had to bid for it and then they opened it and it was like... Yeah, your cardigan. No, no, no. Your, your cap glasses and two weeks of skiddies. Two weeks of skiddies. <laughs> or something like that. Aye, yeah, which is two pair. And I, I would have a yoghurt and a banana and GQ Well, magazine. they're perishable. So Smito, but he get criticised because it came out later on that he didn't do as much you see this is the thing about this Scottish this is the thing about this we we are a nation of fucking begrudgers right you see what happened with Smito Smito is just a guy going about his business smashing everybody's luggage and guitars and all that and then the, the luggage area suddenly there's a terrorist attack Whatever he did, he got steamed in and then he became an international icon. Now, everybody went in the first 24 hours, Smito, what a guy, it's cool to be Scottish. If, you're, if you want to terrorise the Scottish, we'll do you in. And we take a great pride in that idea. And then within 48 hours, he's still all over the world. And the minute that happens, people start to turn against him. <laughs> Who's this ball bag? And I'm sick looking at this guy's face. And then we start to go, maybe he never done as much as he said he did. I mean, I don't know what he done. I don't know what he did today. But the point is, he's became really famous. And that's what the begrudgers do now. The begrudgers go, I can't sick looking at him. Anybody think he'd attacked the whole of Al-Qaeda? Anybody would think he'd done this and that, and then suddenly they go off him. That's why he had to go to New York to get a lot of all these wee small-minded begrudging wankpots mm. that live in Scotland. They go, eh, he thinks he's new Billy Big Boy's new, you know that. Because I did a, a, a Sun newspaper advert with him. Oh, really? Did you know that? <laughs> no. I think it was 2006, we did a series of newspaper ads for the Sun newspaper. And Smito was in one of them. And I'd never met him before. I never met him since. But he was a great guy. He'd sit down and just have a chat with a great guy. And he basically said, Look, I just, I was there and I, I got into them. And I never done anything. 
I never asked for the fame. I never asked for any of that. I just responded and reacted. Most people would have ran away. He just get in the thick of the fray. And then I never choose any of that coverage. Yeah. You know, it sort of weirdly chose me. I just said what I said and then it went viral in the day. So there's nothing he done. There's nothing. Mostly it was all out with his control. He was a great guy. But you, I could understand 100% why if if you get anything at all, people in Scotland go, I forgot his old ass for his new ass and all that. I knew him when he never done arse in his trousers. He when I knew him, it's like you'd say to me, you say you came for nothing. That's that Scottish begrudging mentality. You're all a shower of twisted, useless, talentless, worthless. Anyway, the guy that he dragged off a terrorist, he was the initial guy on the scene and he kicked this terrorist in the balls so hard he broke his leg. Who did? The other guy. That what got other there guy? First. Who was the other guy? If you know his name, put it in the comments. Or if you are the guy. If, oh, if you are the guy. If you're the guy. Shane has a voice note. You need to kick somebody in the balls hard to break your leg. Maybe he had uh, osteoporosis. <laughs> Maybe it was like that guy Samuel L. Jackson played in the film Unbreakable. Uh, Maybe. They say he prevented the terrorist attack. That already took well, place. Well, that already they took basically place, wasn't it? He they, responded to it. What was going to happen after? They just rammed the doors, didn't they? And was the, the Range Rover full of petrol or something? Aye, it was full of petrol, aye. And how many guys was it with? Two of them? Two of them. And they got burnt to death? Two of them with beards. So the guy, so the guy was already on fire? Aye. They got a boot in the boy? Aye. He'd be going, fucking hell, man. <laughs> you just try and do a terrorist attack. You fucking got in flames and somebody comes up and boots you right in the boys. What chance have you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't be a terrorist, kids. It's no big and it's no clever. Aye. So Michael Kerr, his name was, it's come back to me. So Michael Kerr, he broke his leg. No, he, Kicking a terrorist. Well, how come he never came famous? Because he was sitting there with a broken leg. Hey, so he wasn't able to go on he camera. Be able to, he walked to the camera, the television. Hey. <laughs> he just lying there. Hey. We smoke it. But, but Smito, I, I don't know. I, he seemed a nice guy to me. Smito was the biggest thing on the planet for a day. Yeah. I mean, that was his 15 minutes. He was the biggest thing. That was the only news story in the world. I mean, you would need to be living in a cave in Afghanistan if you were the guy who planned it. No, you would need to be living <laughs> in a cave in Afghanistan to not know who Smito was. But then again, you probably would have knew who he was because you'd planned the attack. <laughs> he ran for election in 2009. Really? Aye. For whom? For uh, He replaced... The MP that was the height of the expenses scandal. Michael Martin, his name was. Oh, Ma Michael Martin. Aye, I remember Michael Martin. He, Aye. he had to resign over the expense scandal and then Smeetle stats did. And they only get like 200 votes and he came eighth. Uh, a wheelie bin came seven. <laughs> as much as I liked Smeetle, I'm not so sure I would want him to be my elected representative. <laughs> Do you know what his slogan was? What? We'll say it about you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Some boss are needing invited. <laughs> no. <laughs> fuck, thank fuck. <laughs> right, that's so number one. <laughs> no, right. Number one is Smito. Right. Right, we're going to have a think, we're going to guess from a clip who we think number two is. So here we go. Why does somebody not know how to flush a toilet after they've had a shit? That's one of the funniest things <laughs> that anybody ever seen. There's the two wee lassies are making a video of their own, I don't know, they're live streaming, and their mom comes in, mm -hmm. this wee woman with glasses, and she, and one of them had clearly left a big jobby, and it must have been an enormous jobby. I see, you're right, so let's see the rest of the clip. Well, it was fucking one of yous. Disgusting! <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about that was the wee lassies looked at that and panicked and then looked at the camera <laughs> as if to say, Ma, you've 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 done in our live stream or, or programme or something. I mean that was what was funny about it. Uh, I can't believe you just said that <laughs> to the world. I know, I think the wee lassie showed the video. 
to her, it was like an auntie or something the next day, and she says, you've got to put that online. You've it'll go viral. It. It'll go viral. But I, that's just funny. That was just funny. So where does she now? Uh, she's a cleaner. <laughs> is, she the, no. is she the leader of Kilmarnock uh, Council? <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, I think, I don't know what she does as a job, but she still stays in, they still stay in Scotland. They never went to New York after Is she the head of sanitation the head, for uh, Glasgow Council? Somewhere. I'll clean out the shite. Uh, I'll get the shite out. It's funny. Yeah. Cause, no, that was funny. I know. Because normally, I mean, if you said that to your Wayne these days, you'd probably get social services in your door. If your Wayne's leave a big Richard the Third in a bottom of the pan and Disney flush it. Now, it's fair enough if you flush it because you've been there. You've you've done your ablutions, right? And you've wiped your ass, and you've flushed the pan and there's some jobbies just don't want to go. Mm. But you walk away. You wash your hands and you're away and you don't know the turds floating there. Mm waiting for some unsuspecting <laughs> person to come in and go, oh no, look at the size of that. So this suggests to me Just it must have been in such a shape it wouldn't get around the U-bend or something. <laughs> With that woman that shouted disgusting, you wouldn't really recognise her, you'd be more likely to recognise the daughter. Mere chance to be recognising the jobby. The mum done an interview ten years later and she says when she's like in Tesco, Folk just go disgusting and shout. That's right. <laughs> that's annoying. When I mean, that's fame, you don't want. No. It's like that guy that was on the The Apprentice. Do you, you watch Apprentice? Now and again. I've... I think it's brilliant, right? Yeah. Do you remember the guy that made the serial was called Pants Man? Yes. I mean, he's never going to live that down. No matter what he does in his life, he could create a software company, a big company, be like as rich as Elon Musk. He'll always be fucking Pants yeah. Man. Yeah. If he does a big deal, a billion pound takeover, Pantsman acquires Hansen Group. That's he'll <laughs> always be known as Pantsman. If it, nobody knows his real name, Pantsman. Pantsman. And I would, I remember what he looks like. If I saw him, I'd go, <laughs> "How you doing, Pantsman?" <laughs> and he's going to go, <laughs> "Must be awful." It's like Ric Flair, the wrestler. Woo! Everyone shouts, woo! Every time they see him. Is that right? <laughs> That's his catchphrase. Right. He's like, just goes to events and you pay fair. What age is he now? He oh. must be a 90 odds. <laughs> well, he's, You'll probably give him a heart attack. Probably. But he charges like 50 quid. Well, I, I'd be happy to charge... you got to pay him 50 quid? To shout woo in his face. So. <laughs> <laughs> 50 quid? Uh, I think you, oh, need, you need to pay 80 if you want him to say it. <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible. That's a racket, man. Just well, we're at that point. If you want to see two heroes, two unsung heroes, make sure you check out glasgowdad.com for all tickets and details for our future shows. Ironically, we're going for a number two to number three, but before that, we're going to take a short break and look at what you can expect when you come to a Glasgow Dad show. I buy clays, wear it, and then take it back. Oh, can you get any fucking shame? <laughs> at least when I, well, at least when I wear my pants for a second day, if I was going to take them back, I would wash them. But, <laughs> but they don't take pants back. You guess is the thing. You buy pants, right? You you buy pants and you go, well, they're not quite working for me. Working, <laughs> working. <laughs> well, well some people like boxers and some people being a bit of a fat. Chubster, right? <laughs> I get chub rub, didn't you? You get, you, 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 you yeah, right. You, right. <laughs> you know, when you're out, it's a hot day, you know, and they all flap, start to rub together. You've got a cold fusion reactor down by your ball bag, right? <laughs> So I need, I need, you know, the pants I wear, the, the trunks they're called, so, cos they're anti-chub rub. <laughs> pants, chub rub. You get that. <laughs> you know you do. <laughs> we hit monetization on YouTube and we got a lovely email cos we hit monetization. We? You, uh, you, I never saw the no, fucking email. No, you... <laughs> we? <laughs> He's fucking bummed me. He's bummed me. Uh, that's what I'm saying, you did nothing. You're up at five in the morning robbing me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> You've never had a Canon 500 in your home. You thought a Canon 500's what they let off every fucking afternoon in Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> so we've heard for Smito and we've heard for the jobby woman. So now we go on to number three. We've counted the votes. And so now we had 10.26 million people. The winner of Pop Idol 2003 is Michelle. Did you hear what they said there? 10.3 million people. Vote. Is that the total they people vote. that voted? The that was total. she never got 10 million votes. No, that's the total people that voted. Aye. Te- but geez, oh, I mean, I, I've not, I don't think I've ever voted for one of these shows, have you? No. Never. No. So if that's 10.3 million that have voted, how many folk are watching that, man? No, people who vote multiple times. Jinx all that. Aye. Our mother did 9 because million. Because he charged you to vote, didn't he? Oh, you got charged. charged. Aye. You're you could charge three quid or something. So <laughs> people were voting. So where's Michelle Fay? Coat Bridge or something? She's for so. out the, the, the uh, Coat Bridge or so. Easter House uh-huh. or out the East End, somewhere like that. So everybody, everybody in the East End of Glasgow and in Scotland voted multiple times. But that's not taking any away for you. I'll tell you who won that for her. Pete Waterman won that for her. With his assertion that she didn't look like a pop idol. See if he'd have kept his mouth shut, she would never have won that, or probably wouldn't have won it. It's just that what Pete Waterman did, this millionaire music producer, right? He said, she's not a pop idol, she can't be a pop idol, and he's clearly gone about the aesthetic, right? And the mare he entrenched how rang she was for it, the mare, the British. And by the way, this is a very British thing. Fuck you, you're not telling me how to think. <laughs> We've got a very healthy sense of our own irony in Britain. She would never have won if she was an American. It's like she would never even own it. Pete Waterman won that for her. We, we he's constantly saying, she can't be, she can't win it. And the British says, well, we'll show you, pal. She was like battered in the press because of her looks. <laughs> You've got all that to come, son. <laughs> Talking about Michelle McManus, I actually met Jedward at an event the other day. Where was that? The National Association of Wankers? <laughs> you know, she was the first Scottish female artist to get a number one with a debut single. Debut really? Single. Aye. Didn't you know that? And then the other thing, which is quite linked, which is funny, is as a follow-up, my cousin, right, obviously on mum's side, won a competition called Pot Idol. That was Pot a, Idol? It was, for, it, was it was for chefs and Lorraine Kelly show and he won it. Do you remember Rick Waller, that big massive guy? Aye. Aye. So I don't even know what he's famous for. Was he in Big Brother or something like that? Rick I Waller. I don't know. So anyway, Rick Waller was... Was a, he no in Pop Idol or no? Possi- he was a singer. Ah, possibly then. Aye. So so the only... You're talking about the British people are saying we are not accepting this. He was a judge of the show and he said that my cousin had made chips that were too hard and everyone was like nah that's nonsense he needs to win and they voted him as a winner really and he went on and he worked in the civil did everybody taste the chips <laughs> no just Rick but it was good he done a twist on fish and chips so what he, did he do well he used chip batter for the fish and then fish batter for the chips <laughs> And that's what won it. Typical making fish. Uh, this other guy's like making all this like fine dining, like try to balance like a, I don't know, a, a, a yogurt and tapi a walnut or something like that. Fat people know about food. Right. If a fat guy says, I don't like your food and fat <laughs> people eat more than thin people. So they've got a greater breadth of experience. But you reckon he just won it because he didn't like Rick Waller? Aye. I wonder was, whatever happened to him. I mean, don't know. What happened to your cousin? Well, he went on to work in the Savoy restaurant in London. You're joking? No. no well, that's big time. And he works, he's a head chef at, in the Cotswolds now, in a nice fancy restaurant. Cool. That's all right. Well, there you go then. That's all right. So, Making his weird chips. <laughs> Making his weird chips. So that's Michelle. Michelle McManus is number three. Number three. Let's have a listen at clip number four. 
Who's that? <laughs> well, it's a it's an animal. It's a dog. Who is it? Right, I'll give you a clue. It's in Edinburgh and it doesn't move very much. You can rub it off. Greyfriars Bobby. Greyfriars Bobby. There you go. You're a fan of the Bobby. No, not really. No, especially. <laughs> so he's an unsung hero. I'm not so sure. He's he's a big tourist attraction. Is Greyfriars Bobby? Incredible. Do you know the story? Obviously, his master died, and then the dog used to go for fourteen years to the grave of the master. I don't know if the fourteen years was dog years or it's only two years. Jock Grey was Greyfriars Bobby's owner. Mm-hmm. Old Jock died when Bobby was two, and they say that old Jock got buried, and Bobby lay on the grave for 14 years, right? You see, people make money off this dog, right? Because tourists were coming in to see the dog, and they were, what were they doing? They were they were going in the boozers, they were going in the restaurants and cafes, they were buying sandwiches or whatever they were doing. Maybe they were even staying at an inn or something. So what happens is, they get up one morning, the dog's dead. Oh, no, man, the dog's dead. I've got bookings tonight. <laughs> There's people coming. Stay in my in my hostel, right? V-I- and, uh, V-I-P. We've, got, we've got four people in for dinner, four punters coming for peoples. Oh, fuck, you better get another dog. So they could have done a weekend at Bernie's shot, right? <laughs> and I don't know, go another dog to hold the dog up or something, but they thought, quick, get a dog. I mean, the dog was even the same colour. <laughs> You know what I mean? Everybody turned up now. Greyfriars Bobby was a sky terrier, mm-hmm. the type of dog. So people turned up and there's this mad Rockweiler sitting there. <laughs> we was trying with Greyfriars Bobby. Ah, oh, he's been overdoing it on the pies and that. You know, but but he'll be out in a minute. Out in a minute. Look at the size of him. No, oh, he's he's got an inflammation in the brain, <laughs> right? No bother. So they double shifted. They they, they shifted two dogs. It's like, two dogs. It's like that outrage talking about Paul Pido when the Lassie with Britain's Got Talent had the two dogs. Did you see that? No, I don't watch these so shows. So she, she won Britain's Got Talent with a dog, so she had right. a dog. But right. there was actually another dog that used to come out with the tricks and everybody thought this one dog was doing great things. And then after she won, so she won two, she won 250,000 and the dog got a biscuit and arthritis. And there was actually another dog. And there was an outrage. So that's again, somebody gets f- successful in Britain and then the British turn against her. It's <laughs> just the way we are in this country, man. Mm-hmm. What a nation of fuckwits. Do you know that Disney made a movie about Greyfriars? I know, Bobby? seen it. Uh, you saw it, what did you think of it? It's one of the wee twee movies, isn't it? So see the dog that played Greyfriars, Bobby? So he made loads of money during the 70s going to like, charity events and visiting hospitals. So he visited hospitals as one of a charity He's in the patient. 70s? In hospitals, eh? right? I wonder if I ever ran into Jimmy Savile. <laughs> so the wee dog that was in the movie get cremated and returned to Edinburgh. Wait, the ashes get returned the to Edinburgh. The ashes get donated to the Edinburgh because it's a tourist attraction. Dude. It's a lot of pish. Aye. This is it's a box of ashes. I mean, look at that funeral director down in Hull. Have you seen this? Oh, I the. He was getting yeah, the ashes he, out. He was getting, probably been smoking them. There you go, there's your, your ashes. I mean, he's no done anything. I mean, it's a scandal. You know what? You tell people stuff, they believe it. So that was Greyfriars, Bobby. So the last one, let's see if we can recognise the last one. The clock is ticking. Before we count down to midnight, there were some stunning shots from around the country. Get ready. It is only seconds to go. Let's reflect on the year gone by. People in the comments can tell us who he is. I can't remember his name. I don't it's, even remember it. What? You don't remember it? No, I don't that's remember like that. one of the most viral Scottish clips that's ever is went it? about. Aye. Because he, he wasn't. You say so. Well, he never said he was slagging her off. He, he just thought it would be a bit of a laugh, and the whole thing went viral. It's a bad day when that's the highlight of the Hogmanay TV show. Just some guy being a wee fanny. The wee guys, just, it's just like you are the back, you know what I mean? Making an arse of yourself in front of a bird. I was in the house watching it. What year was that? Oh, it must have been 2017, possibly. Was it as recent as that? Yeah, I would say 2016, 2017. Well, I, I tend not to watch that Hogmanay thing anyway. I would never watch anything like that. Just all bollocks. <laughs> 
What hey. would you do in Hogmanay then? I don't know, just it's live in the moment. I don't know what I do in Hogmanay. I just do what I do, but I would never watch any app bollocks. <laughs> I've done the warm up for the Hogmanay show. Yeah, I've done it, I know. Nice. I was doing it at the BBC studios, and well, Jackie Bird was there, and you do the warm up, and it's. Aye. Murder. It's, I mean, it's. It's tough. It's. Oh. It's terrible TV. Mm. Do you know my. About Lewis Capaldi when I'd done it for Lewis Capaldi. So it was in. You know this? Did I tell you this story? I may have heard it, but they haven't. Aye. So supporting Lewis Capaldi doing his TV warm up in October. And obviously it's two o'clock in the afternoon and folk have had a drink, but they're steaming at two o'clock. And I'm leaving the studio at four o'clock and there's a woman pressed against the building the BBC Scotland greeting on the phone wishing her more a happy new year hey. I mean that is Glasgow over the back but Jackie Jackie Bird presented that show for 20 years and there was two other people up for the for presenting it but obviously the BBC thought one bird in the hands worth two in the bush so uh, that's very good that you see you, you you could have your own podcast with that sort of part that's brilliant Hug me day, obviously is the end of the year and that brings us to the end of this episode now before we go let's have a look and see what you decided was the best clip from last week Dad did you see that there's been another eruption in Iceland? Tell me about it some old bag banjoing me for lifting the last box of fish fingers fuck off Please give us five stars on any podcast providers or if you're on YouTube, give us a wee subscribe and hit that bell button. You can follow us on glasgowdad.com. All through our social links will take you to everything that we're doing. And if you enjoyed us, tell everyone. But if you didn't, fuck off. <laughs>